Bonjour. Tell me, I'm trying to remember where we first met, the VN Expo, maybe? I think it was. You, but you know, I have a feeling that I've met you in another life. I agree. Both you and I were during the Renaissance era in yeah. Italy. In Florence. That's it. So that's where you learned to speak Italian? That's it. That's yeah. where I perfected my Italian. I've always been Italian deep Same. in my roots. Everybody wishes to be Italian. For sure. Who doesn't want to be Donald Zeraldo? <laughs> That has been my dream since I've met you. <laughs> um, Burgundy. Yes. Your Tell me about your family, your dad. I had the pleasure of meeting your dad. Of course. Dad. And my mother as and well. Your mother and your sister. Yes. Everybody. Wonderful, wonderful family. Thank I you. Tell them, give them my best regards. Always. So tell me a little bit about your Burgundian heritage. Just well, bring us to I was home. very fortunate, Donald, as you know, to be born in Vujo, a very historical place in the heart of the Côte de Nuit, where Pinot Noir really started. And as a child, my parents started the winery in the living room, Donald. In the living room. My mother was a magnificent ballet dancer. My father came out of the military service. And they said, we together, we might as well make wine. So they bought a barrel, then two, then three, and they made wine at home. So my sister and I got to learn winemaking since birth, wine tasting since birth. <laughs> And at the age of five and six, we were tasting wine, not diluted with water. Unfortunately, Italians diluted with water. That's tragic. You don't understand the essence of the wine. <laughs> have less, but have it pure. And then by 11, we were already making wine with our parents. You know, and that's where we were born. So our garden, our playground, was the vineyards of the Clos Vougeot. So we got very fortunate to very early on discover the finest of the finest of wines and be in the world of wine. So this was my upbringing. Village, you've been there, 186 people. You know, humble, focused on wine and with great people who love soil, who love nature, who love the essence of mother nature. Now, was your wine cellar below the house? Absolutely. Like most I see in Boy yes. Now, I was told Historical that, sellers from the 17th century. I was told at 11 years old, yes. somebody brought you to California, and you saw this place, the Buena Vista Winery? My grandparents were resistant in the Second World War. They were school teachers, and they were phenomenal people, and they took us, in fact, to California with my parents, and we got to discover this amazing winery. That's the only winery we actually visited. We came to this winery, and I had an awakening, an enlightenment. One of those moments that changes how you see the world, I felt the wall of this winery that we could see here. At 11 years old? 11 years old, and I said, this is the place I want to be one day. My sister had the similar emotion, and we talked about it, and we said, would it be great one day to make wine in California? We were 11, she was 13 and a half, and we said to ourselves, that's a dream. So my dream in life, that paradigm shift, that happened at 11. One, I fell in love with the U.S. Two, love the people here. Three, felt the energy here. And fourth, thought a place like that in our hands could eventually blossom. So you came to United California to go to school, correct? Is that the first well, time back after the I time? went to the French International School in Washington, D.C. at 16. Got my baccalaureate, you know, my French A-levels, if you wish, mm -hmm. at 17. Went back to the UK for university and came back to graduate school in the US. And as I was in graduate school is really when I felt this was the place I wanted to spend time. So I really was going to go actually into finance, which is my background, besides obviously winemaking and the vineyards. And my parents said, you know, the US is a tough place. If you want to be there, be it, but we may not continue in wine. I said, what? This is the best place to be. And they said, well, here's the key. 
If you think you can figure it out, try. So I really lived a big ambivalent moment. Do I go to do finance, which was really what I was trained and wanted to do, or do I take part of the family business, which was very small at the time, yeah. and I chose the latter. So we had one person. So we started literally really from zero, and obviously, very fortunately, is the time when we met, and we started to build a little bit and a little bit our French wines, and then an opportunity to acquire a winery in California, and then another one. I went back to France for another 12 years. When we build what we build together, I was living, as you know, full-time in France. Yes. And uh, then opportunity to live a life that was bicultural. My dream was always to be in Northern America. But what inspired you to come back here and leave your family, leave your heritage there and come here? Well, I never left the heritage. I always was attracted to come here to build and create. You know, I think the, the two cultures of France and the U.S. is very complementary. Both together equals three, not two. Why? Because the French are really believing in history, in tradition, in heritage, in a certain savoir-faire, in a raison d'être of doing things. And the Americans are very innovative, very creative, extremely forward thinkers and dynamic. So I wanted both of those worlds in my life. So I really crafted you know, my life, my business today uh, in order to be in both. And that was a clear decision when I was 11 here, I said, this is the taste I want to have forever. And I live my life today this way. I never could be in France full time and I could never be in the US full time. So one other thing, I know you bought a few wineries, but yes. then you came back and you met this charming young lady who yes. had a couple acres here in the valley. That's or, right. Matter of fact, the whole state of California. Gina. Yes. How did you two romantically engage? Well, we romantically engaged in Bordeaux, of all places, at a great place you know named Vinexpo. So it was a wonderful, you know, circumstance. And uh, in many ways, love at first sight. I saw those beautiful blue eyes of Gina. And we, we entered a romance, and the timing was impeccable for, for us because I was, you know, we're both bachelors. I was really attempting to acquire the loach. So that's where you disappeared for a while because I lost you. We used to we used to visit, you know, and travel and party together and all of a sudden you disappeared. No, what what happened is we acquired the loach vineyards. And that was I succeeded to we succeeded to buy that winery at the same time as the romance. So I was still living in Burgundy and we went back and forth on our romance for four and a half years. I was living in France till 2007 when we acquired and on the verge to acquire Raymond Vineyards and then a few others and more vineyards and more things in California. So I changed my life again and said, I'm going to live and run both places, both sides of the world, but from the U.S. perspective rather than reverse. Raymond Vineyard, which you brought up. Yeah. So tell us about the inspiration you have the Rouge Room, you have the, yeah. what I call the Willy Wonka Room, yeah. where you make your own wine. And then you've got these rather interesting uh, mannequins, mannequins in the tank cellar. Tell us, e tell us well, a little bit about each one of those. For sure, Raymond is a love affair. I love the Raymond family. You know, they've been in, in, in the wine world for five generations. The four, I saw them, four brothers? That's right. And since 1896, really, and Beringer way back. So I love the Raymond, knew them in the trade, as you know a lot of people and always courted them to say, if one day you wanted to sell, I would be interested. And that time came. That's why patience is always very important. And Raymond is over 300 acres in the heart of Santa Lina and Rutherford. I and mean, that property is 300 acres? Yeah, this is, and the production facility too? That's right. So this is heavy league. This is amazing. So I saw a way where we could express ourselves, like the loach, convert it into fully organic, and fully biodynamic, so the 300 estate acre ranch is organic and biodynamically certified. I saw an enormous opportunity for us to be able to showcase the public, the guests, an opportunity to showcase them what is nature. You have a two acre theater of nature where we show you, teach you everything about mother nature, the environment, organic and biodynamic farming. The red room is all about the textures of wine, the different layers of red wine. So I took 
seven different levels of velvet, leather, and silk. As you touch the walls and the sofa, how is it and how does it feel to be so unique and special in your glass? Was it inspired by the Moulin Rouge? Always. I'm always inspired by the Moulin Rouge and their dancers. Those gorgeous legs and That's structure. That's on top of the tanks. That's it. The mannequins. Well, mannequin, I love theater like you do. And I, I believe theater expresses so much. I cannot have active actors. Therefore, I put mannequins that I dress up with the Rio de Janeiro dress of the uh, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, yeah. And all the dresses have been bought in Brazil and in Venice. So they're amazing textures and fabric. We do sometimes haute couture. We do sometimes fashion. And they really represent the colors of wine, the layers of wine. You know, we call in the world of wine the dress of wine. Wine is the dress, and you describe the dress, the legs of the wine. So that's why I really wanted to do this. And why so much mirror and crystal? It's all a dialogue with yourself, a dialogue of what you feel and what you sense and what you see and what you don't see. So I love mirror because when you look at a mirror, you look at yourself. And as you taste wine, you have facial expression you don't know you have, which really represents if you like, don't like, or what the wine makes you feel. When I was at the village, the JCB village, I opened a book and I was going through a book that you published. Yes. And there's a mirror in it. That's right. And not only does it reflect the words, which are backwards that you can't read, I looked and there I was. That's it. You saw yourself. You're charming Donaldo Zeraldino. <laughs> and what it says, dear friends, on that page is basically the way you see the world is not always the way you should see the world. And see the world your way you want to see the world and reflect what is inside and do like you've done in your life, Donald, with all your creation and success, what life gets you to do. JCB Yonville, which is your village. Yes. Amazing. I was in Thank there. That's where I found the book with the mirror. Yes. Tell me about how that Well, happened. it's an exciting place. You know, we have our good friend Thomas Keller, who built on one side of the main street his beautiful French laundry, Bouchon, Ad Hoc and all these great restaurants, we thought on the other side there was an opportunity for us to express ourselves in a very different way. So the JCB Winery, the brand that I've created under my own initials, is really all about celebrating style and transcending terroir. So I don't talk about a sense of place, I talk about a style. So everyone is a number, and every number corresponds to a unique moment of my life. And we created an amazing tasting salon, village, wine lounge, where we do lifestyle. So it's all about wine tasting from champagne to sparkling to wine. And where we really introduce as well the lifestyle of the art of the table, fragrance, jewelry, fashion. So in that whole phenomenal estates, we represent what I love. So the village is all about me. I design every single piece of the village. Your name's on, not yeah. your physical name, but your passion and your inspiration is everywhere. Thank you. When you walk in, you don't need the sign outside. You <laughs> walk in, ah, I don't know who made this up. So that's JCB Yonville. Yonville is kind of the, Amer the mini Beverly Hills of Napa Valley. It's the capital of luxury. You wander around, you eat well, you drink well, and you take time to enjoy. And then you continue to discover, obviously, Napa Valley. So it was very important for JCB to be anchored in Yonville. We have another lounge in San Lina. We're going to open a new one at the depot in one of the cars. It's going to be all about caviar. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun, but it's great to be able to be there in order to really feel the energy of what an amazing luxury food and wine town is all about. And this is the, the Mecca, the Vatican. This is the temple of all in terms of food. Let's uh, talk about another famous artist who you've been working with. Yes. Who I admire greatly, not only for his love of wine yeah. and his skill as yeah. a musician, singer, but he is a great activist, John Legend. Oh, for sure. So John and I became friends first in the famous Red Room. We met John in the Red Room. It became an extraordinary moment, a great discovery, a great friendship. And as we met, uh, you know, John said, I want to make wine. And John really showed me he loved wine and he drank wine and he was serious about it. So 
He said that, so I said, let's do it. So we created a joint venture, so it's a true 50-50 venture where we together co-own everything we do. It's been a great success. We make an amazing Napa Cab, Napa Chardonnay, a great red blend, a fantastic South of France rosé because he wants to be in the Provence. Oh yeah, he's well, got a French version as well. We do, it's very successful. It's actually our biggest seller. It's a Provence Grenache rosé from Saint Victoire. And then finally, we have an incredible sparkling wine as well, rosé from France as well. So we have five wines and we're launching two more and it's a great success. So we love John and- uh, Are they in we, Canada yet? Uh, they are. Okay, I was gonna say So you could find it in Canada at this stage, which is very exciting. Cool. So to John Legend, dear friend, Downing. celebrities can have a positive impact in One, wine, yeah. activism, and obviously his belief, so we love him for all he is. And unfortunately, he probably won't be able to teach us how to sing, right? <laughs> it's going to be tough. He's trying to teach me a, about how to play piano, and he says it's worthless. <laughs> so he says, stick to wine, I'll stick to music. <laughs> <laughs>